we have here is a piston. This one we've started to clean. Um, we have lands which sit in the back here. The the, the bottom of a of a hole of a, of a a ring groove on a piston is called a land. In the bottom land, which is the oil control land, we have uh, oil return passages that you have to find a device that will go in and clean the passage out of any congealed oil and uh, carbon buildup that could be in there um, once having removed the rings. Um, when you do an engine rebuild, um, if you're not replacing the cylinders, the pistons, because they don't need replacing, um, you should always replace the rings. Um, so to make sure that your rings seat properly on the piston, uh, you have to clean out all the piston, all the ring lands. Um, we have a ring cleaning, uh, a land cleaning device. Um, as you can see, there's all kinds of nastiness here. If you can get that, that came out of the uh, the, the oil control ring land. Um, that's uh, congealed oil, soot, uh, carbon buildup, um, all sorts of nastiness. You don't want that in when you put new rings on. Uh, the what is called the second groove because it numbers from the top. So the second groove, um, unfortunately, our uh, land cleaning tool doesn't have a. Uh, a probe that is small enough to get in there and I, I really don't want to go grind one so uh, we use a pick and gently scrape around to get any carbon deposits out what we don't want to do is remove any of the aluminium from the piston or cause any nick oh. so do we just need to use a pick to remove any nastiness that's uh, build up carbon or residual um, oil that's in the land of the second ring groove. Um, same for the first. Again, on this particular piston, my land tool has not got the right size uh, probe for it, so uh, it's just a matter of gently working whatever's in there out. Um, you could use a wire brush um, to get rid of a lot of the built up carbon. Um, you do so gently. Do not use a wire brush that's attached to a drill or a uh, air tool. Those are just, re will, will remove the carbon, but they will also remove some of the metal substrate. And you want to avoid that at all costs. Um, this stuff is pretty tough. I mean, I'm digging into it with a pick, and it just does not want to move, but just persist and gently scratch, scratch the surface, and you'll get it to flake off um, without damaging the piston. Once you've got the piston clean, um, you should check all around the skirt for any cracks, abrasions, um, abnormal wear you should check around the pinhole again for cracking uh, abnormal wear uh, the pin will move up and down um, it's pressed through the piston through the connecting rod and through the other side of the piston so it's it, the connecting rod is where it is actually pressed through it's an interference fit. It should slide. If there is any rotational movement between the rod and the piston, um, not a very good demonstration. I usually put this in a vise and put a dial indicator on it to check that. Um, you would have to have the uh, the piston and rod separated. Have the uh, have the pin checked for. Uh, 
for shape and size um, and find out where that rotation is coming from either replace the piston, replace the rod or have the rod and piston resized and a new pin put in um, that's about it for clean pistons I mean this needs a little more cleaning before we uh, re-ring it but just to show you a piston as it comes out of the engine um, as you can see it's pretty much full of nastiness um, you can see that there is a a definite wear mark here and here um, this engine lays on a slant that way so gravity being what it is um, this is where the wear happens if you were to get wear on both sides at the same time that would be indicative of a problem um, your piston would be doing this number inside the bore and that is unhealthy to say the least um, and you'd probably hear it slapping around uh, when you rev the engine um, a uniform wear like this uh, and a uniform pattern of blow-by blow-by being the exhaust gases escape uh, under compression down through the rings um, and oil will be forced up onto the cylinder walls so you will always get this this congealed mass um, on the pistons um, that's quite a normal piston for the mileage of the vehicle um, there is no play in the piston that is abnormal so we're quite happy to reuse this um, but again once it's been uh, we've taken the old rings off and uh, cleaned the piston up we'll put brand new rings on there and uh, everything will be good so uh, there you go that's a, about all there is about pistons uh, you need to check the crown for damage crown. this would be the piston crown okay the top um, this particular engine is what they call an interference engine um, that's because the valves interfere with the stroke of the piston the piston goes up and down okay and the valves, you got actually have four valves on this, but I'll just demonstrate two. Open one at a time, or two at a time, dependent upon the configuration. This one happens to be two at a time. The valves that uh, connect through the cylinder head to the cylinder here, when the piston comes all the way up, are closed. Okay, if the valves go out of time with the piston they will be open when the piston comes up and it will hit the piston okay that's a design of the engine and that's why it's called an interference engine as against a non-interference engine where it doesn't matter the position of the valves the piston will always clear the valves yeah. differences what are you going to do everybody's different and those are the other two. Nice clean oil pan. All shiny painted new. Engine block. And the head should be coming in on Monday.